Okay, I'd like to welcome those of you who have uh, joined us in the last few minutes. I'm John Stowey, the uh, co-chair of the server project in OCP. Uh, welcome to the server project room. Go ahead and get started with the first presentation. Uh, it's going to be led by Jia on the OCP V2 Nick and V2 Mez and beyond, um, looking at how we're going to create the next gen V3 Mez. Uh, Jia? Yeah, thank you for the intro, uh, John. And good morning, everyone. Uh, it's very early. And uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone, to make through traffic uh, to get here. I hope I can keep you guys. Uh, Awake, uh, and uh, and uh, so the topic is the OCP managing car. So I see many uh, familiar faces. I have uh, directly engaged with you, uh, either being our supplier or being just community partner that help to answer questions, help the implementation. So thank you for coming, and for the for the people that I uh, haven't met in person um, before. Uh, uh, I think it's a, a good uh, forum for for touch base and uh, see each other. And because we have, uh, um, uh, I, to me, I feel like we have a big job in front of us. So we, we, it's good that we can <laughs> meet each other and, and, uh, and uh, in person and, and uh, make something happen. And so getting to the topics. Oh, so this is forward, OK. So, um, so uh, uh, OK. A little bit background. So, uh, so how, how the. Oops, I think I'm going to stick with this thing. Mode predictable. Yeah. So, uh, so OCP measuring card is actually kind of pretty interesting. Is like it's something that we we um, we didn't really plan for it. Uh, okay, uh, is it maybe auto advancing? Huh? Oh, okay, I yeah, good point. Just use a laser point. Okay. So it's it's not something that uh, um, kind of we we plan for it. It's more like something uh, happened to happen. So the the background is uh, the first time Facebook's involvement in in this topic is we uh, we design a server called uh, Windmill. Uh, it's it's um, Sandy Bridge, Ivory Bridge, uh, EP based and. Uh, and uh, it's about we designed in 2011 or 10 ish, like even before I joined Facebook. And uh, so, so, so the form factor has a, some requirement on the PCIe car, and uh, so we want to keep the network car somewhat more com compact. So we designed a mezzanine car, um, pretty low profile, and uh, the connector sync into the baseball and trying to get some vertical space. And I believe many of the, uh, the gears, uh, like uh, OEM gears or different server design use this kind of concept. So, but there wasn't any um, kind of uh, default form factor to go with. So, um, so, and we didn't actually start with like defining some industry mass form factor. It's more like, okay, we have this problem. We define something to solve. To, to be uh, to be solved, and then we we kind of come out a uh, uh, form factor like the outline is just uh, good enough for our use case by then as one or two ports, 10 gig SFP, and uh, and in order to like enable multiple vendors uh, for the Windmill server, so we say okay, we may need to draw a draw spec or like have a DXF so so that the same motherboard can work with more than one NIC. So this is how the <laughs> spec comes. Uh, come out and initially it is just uh, sending to our supplier say okay if you want to do Nick do this way um, so that it will work with our server and later uh, when we contribute the spec of windmill to the to the OCP um, we we think maybe yeah maybe we can try to make the mezzanine car itself a separate spec and then we um, polish it and just put it there that's the status of around the what 2012 ish, uh, and uh, and uh, we don't really know what will happen. Uh, and at that time, we can see the status that 2011, uh, 2011, 12 ish is is the use case very well specified by APCIe Gen 3 and 2 Tengi uh, SCP plus is. Uh, and then the other thing we uh, we have at that time is okay. We we at that time we use the ME firmware as the management. 
um, controller. So it takes I square C as the the sideband, auto band uh, traffic. So we 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 have the I square C, and that's a very specific use case. The pin out were defined around that scope, and the the ball outline is defined on that scope. And very interesting, if you see the the very old spec, there is a little notch uh, on the outline. And guess what? That's for to get away from a jumper on the motherboard. So there wasn't really good planning back then. And and uh, uh, things going forward, uh, we kind of start to see the benefit of the mezzanine car in our in our like server deployment. So uh, giving an example, it, like give us some flexibility on uh, multiple vendor support. Of course, it still carry the goodness of the the lower profile and uh, and uh, be able to provide a more flexible configuration for the rest of the system. Uh, and uh, on the sideband, we have some more um, flexibility. When we um, need a higher bandwidth sideband, we may have option with NCSI, uh, which PCIe doesn't um, natively support. So, so a few years after the 2012, we start to have more new use cases, and we, we kind of want to stay with the main form factor. So at that time, uh, what happened is kind of uh, for us, like Facebook, if I put my Facebook uh, hats on, is, is we see some new use case. We work with a few suppliers to uh, conquer that or like to engineer something around it. And one good example is, uh, is a multi-host NIC uh, that it is to enable our Yosemite platform for the multi-host multi use case, and we need to have four, <coughs> four uh, SOC uh, and four uh, root complex talk to one NIC, but uh, to, toward the outside, it's like a, a, a single uh, network uh, uh, car. And, uh, and, and then there, of course, there are many things need to work around this. For example, we need to define a pin out to accommodate that kind of uh, four to one uh, split, and we need to define the extra PCIe clock from four different hosts to the same NIC uh, and the uh, miscellaneous signal and handshake me mechanism around it. Uh, and, uh, and this is just an example, but uh, how it works out for the MES 2.0 is usually we hit a use case, we work with someone to come out some plan, and then we put it into a spec, and then we then we put a spec out uh, to the community for comments. But uh, we already pretty much has a set plan and has a line of sight. In some cases, maybe we already have working prototype to prove, yeah, this works. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, this and for the MES 2.0, uh, we kind of you can see a short list of what we try to put in, and those are the, the improvements. And when we do that, we trying to make it as much spec or comp compatible uh, in the context of like Facebook use case. Like if we have a old and new platform transition, we think, ah, oh, maybe we will move to the new NIC for the new platform, and the, we don't care the backward compatibility at that time. Um, and, uh, and things can repeat like this, can repeat happen. Um, but uh, I think at this time is uh, very different, like, especially like, since like last summit and to this summit, I see like a lot more adoption uh, in, the, in, the, in the server. Uh, and the NIC side, so so both the baseball and the NIC, um, I, I see like probably um, about maybe 15 vendors or suppliers in those areas that I'm aware of are using the form factor in their baseball or or NIC, uh, and maybe some I'm not aware, of, but I discovered in the summit uh, yesterday. So uh, so we think we, we should take a different approach uh, if we want to make further changes to the spec uh, to, to uh, make it uh, um, kind of, for example, widen the use case or address some challenges we will go through. Um, and uh, the approach we hope this time is not uh, Facebook go ahead, work with a few vendor and come out something and, and, and show everybody, here you go, and you know, please go with it. Uh, instead, we, we want to uh, invite and reach out uh, to as wide as we can and uh, form a, a community that um, uh, with the stakeholders and uh, maybe observer, bystander that just looking but interested uh, to give inputs to the coming changes, to look at all those options. 
and, uh, and uh, to have a saying in the evol uh, evolving spec and also to, to have a heads up uh, to see what's coming in the next uh, couple of years and, uh, and plan accordingly um, if that affects your strategy or product roadmap or uh, design. Um, so, so we hope to, to, to kind of kick off this effort and uh, we will go through like um, how, do you, how can you involve um, later, but in general, we want to set the stage uh, for this kind of uh, working model uh, instead of um, uh, Facebook define something and push to the community. Yeah, so um, quick update to the status uh, of where we are. Uh, so uh, in general, we see the healthy uh, adoption. If you go to the expo hall, you will see many cases, probably half or more than half of the hardware uh, or server um, being demoed come with uh, this form factor. And uh, uh, one thing maybe not everyone is uh, aware, uh, during last year there is a, a collaboration happened is, uh, is on the PCI Gen 4. So, so the, the background is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, Zeiss is one of the platform that, uh, first platform that uh, supports PCI Gen 4. And there is also a, a, a NIC requirement, uh, PCI Gen 4 NIC requirement. And uh, for, for that case, the stakeholders here, the NIC vendor, the system vendor, and the, the two customer here, uh, and also the processor vendor that reach out to the, the OCP mass and say, hey, we, we, we need something PCI Gen 4. Um, but uh, we are also interested with the, the phone factor. However, there isn't a connector. Uh, uh, that supports the PCI Gen 4. So uh, we reached to the uh, FCI, uh, a a AFCI to kind of give this feedback. So, you know, the Bergstack connector used in the design, but um, we need a Gen 4. And we kind of have a many um, iteration of improvements and trying to, the goal is trying, trying to come out a Gen 4 compatible um, uh, Gen 4 uh, ready, but a backward compatible um, burger stack connector. And, and uh, from the status of now, it seems like we made it. And uh, uh, the system here is doing the testing with the new connector being enabled. Um, and uh, I want to openly appreciate uh, Amphenol uh, AFCI's support in this effort to make that happen. And uh, everyone that being open to take that kind of approach here. Um, and then during during uh, last a couple of years, I kind of getting reached out for um, typical two kind of cases, or maybe usually they come together. One is the question about implementation, like uh, you know, this is spec, and how do I understand it? Should, can I do this or do that? Does it violate the spec? Does, you know, if I do this, is it spec compliant? If you will. Uh, and another angle is, uh, I have some use case, but uh, um, it seems there is some difficulty to implement and, uh, and uh, say, can we make some changes to the specification so make those use case possible? And, uh, uh, and I, I think I will focus more on the second case here, like, because that's kind of the challenge and that's the area that want, we want to make improvement in the, uh, as, a, as a community together. And, uh, Right side is a short list, but uh, that's just what I'm aware of. So um, if you are not on list, feel free to reach to me <laughs> for me to put on the list next time, but just give, give an example yeah. of the adopter. So pain points. So uh, there are many feedbacks, but I will focus on the high, high impact one or like the, the, the most critical one in more detail. And in the, the, the probably number one, Number one feedback I get is the thermal or the, the phone factor is not able to handle the growing power of the NIC. So, um, so with kind of in the past a couple of years, there is also a trend of like the networking car, like in two areas, maybe one is a speed bump. Like we were talking about transitioning from one gig to 10 gig in Facebook context um, five, six years ago and we made it. And but uh, and it, it, then we quickly like move to the 2550 hungry gi and the probably higher 
speed. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's happening everywhere. So, so the network car has a, like a, a kind of 10x throughput, and the, the power doesn't really go 10x, but uh, um, it, it's trending to, towards doubling the power throughout the process. And uh, the, the original form factor was defined in a kind of compact eight millimeter height um, kind of profile, and we we had we 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 put it into a few options to increase the heating height, um, but it's still a very kind of confined physical space, and there's not much magic we can play around in, in that in that space, and. Uh, and uh, um, so the number one challenge I get is if I have a 15 watt or higher NIC um, uh, with that kind of throughput, um, it, it's hard to make it happen. And the second trend, <coughs> the second trend is uh, is uh, the kind of the NIC is the NIC vendor is trying to kind of enhance more capability uh, of the NIC by putting in something like a coprocessor or a serious um, processor with uh, um, separate DRAM or an FPGA into the NIC. It can be in the NIC ASIC itself, packaging the same package, uh, or it is a coprocessor that's on the same PCB uh, of the network car. But in general, we are looking at uh, uh, a bigger scope than uh, some adapter between PCIe and network. Uh, it has part, kind of carry a good part of processing capability, and of course, the, that means more power. So those are all points to the, the power uh, constraint. And, and meanwhile, um, kind of go hand to hand with the power is the, uh, maybe a bigger, bigger package size and uh, uh, more um, peripheral components or DRAMs that need to sit together with those, those enhanced capability. And the, the little car we have here uh, just simply doesn't have enough space to drop like um, nine DRAM chip with, with a, a, a good size silicon. <coughs> uh, a couple other feedbacks are like uh, the PCIe side, uh, currently we support the uh, I can call it support by 16 Gen 4, but uh, there may be some like I wish list of extending that to um, by 32. It also goes back to the co-processing or FPGA kind of um, use case. <coughs> and, uh, and then uh, all those um, trends are driving to uh, uh, points to the limitation of our mechanical uh, form factor. Oh, oh, and of course, another one I didn't mention is the, some uh, optical use case. So when we enable this, we didn't really have um, the optical use case uh, on top of our mind. So when we uh, put on a spec, we didn't really um, have consideration or like it may work, but uh, we didn't really have a specification around it to, to support that. So that's also one feedback we get is, is with the wide adoption of the the form factor and the, there are people using optics as people using passive uh, and how do we uh, make it more friendly to the user, to the adopter. More? There are more pain points? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, one big one actually I didn't point out earlier is, uh, is the PCIe. So, so uh, th this is the defect form factor today and uh, and the first uh, maybe for the newcomer I want to throw in a little bit background is we have two connectors one is connector A and connector B. Connector A is the one that we defined in 2011 and 12 and it has by A PCIe and uh, a bunch of other like clock, power, miscellaneous signal and connector B is what we added with the constraint of like we want to keep the backward compatibility and in the term that we have a uh, by 16 baseboard form factor, but uh, we, we can drop in by a mezzanine car, and that's kind of very valid use case we use today. And, uh, but when we come out the connect A, like in 2010, 11, uh, we didn't realize kind of it is on the opposite side of the, the, the kind of the wrong side of the, the, the silicon. And at that time, we didn't really get feedback from the 
uh, uh, our vendor, our suppliers say, hey, this is the wrong side. Actually, this actually makes the PCI routing awkward. Uh, probably because we were talking about by, by A, Gen 3, and the, the, the routing not that challenge, and there isn't a bunch of other DRAM or um, complicated stuff or power circuit around. So, so, so they, our supply just uh, uh, buy the bullet and make it happen, so we didn't really re realize it. But uh, if you imagine a mezzanine car, kind of I put a dotted line here as, um, as the chip is on the invisible side uh, of the PCB. It's, it, the connector A is actually on the opposite side of the, the PCIe uh, standard golden finger. And if someone has a silicon that optimized for PCIe, the likelihood of network side, network uh, connector is on one side and PCIe is either on the side or on the opposite. Uh, which makes the PCI routing, if it follows the MES 2.0, it will pretty much surrounding the, the package. Uh, and uh, if you have any other routing uh, from the ASIC to, to somewhere, it, it's, it's on the way. So, so that's kind of one legacy uh, limitation or the pain point we, we, we are aware of now. And uh, another thing is the usability. Of the spec, or like how how it's easy is it easy to read, easy to understand for newcomer, and I take the the, the feedback is yeah it's not because I get a lot of questions that is just uh, how do I interpret the spec, and uh, uh, the background is the spec is written in a way that like uh, over the years we start to make um, derivative we make, we start to make changes make the optional options. Uh, and try to describe in an incremental way. And there is a default implementation. And if you, if there is many if then, if then kind of uh, logic in the spec. So it's kind of hard to read and it's not as clean as a, a clean sheet that this is a scope and you have maybe two major options. Um, so, so if we want to redo the spec, I would uh, definitely try to make it um, a clean, start from a more like clean sheet and uh, and uh, try to describe it from a, um, a more easier to understand for whoever like even you are just in getting involved it should be um, reasonable easy to to be understand uh, and last uh, uh, major feedback we get here is the in general the like um, many of the Facebook server has the the front uh, front uh, panel open so we didn't kind of pay too much attention in, in defining a, a, a EMI shield or a bracket uh, like PCIe, if you will. And, uh, and this brings to some challenge or difficulty friction in adoption. For example, uh, if someone uh, makes a, um, a system that's uh, compatible with the, um, the OCP mezzanine car, uh, they need to dig different kind of hole or maybe make that um, portion a uh, replaceable part to fit into different NIC. Uh, we try to standardize the location of the, the, the um, same QSFP connectors. Uh, however, like the LED location is, is not uh, strictly defined. So uh, if you want to have a light pipe to guide light out, uh, there may be slight shift. And, and even a couple of millimeter of shift will break your design uh, of light pipe. So, so that's kind of, if there is a defined um, bracket um, that uh, um, kind of becomes a layer of both EMI interface and the, uh, the LED will be part of the bracket uh, at each vendor's discretion, then, then it will help in that context. And uh, let's move on. Yeah, and during kind of uh, during the discussion, I, one of the vendor uh, we kind of have had a very open discussion on uh, on the topic like if you have a very high power, like all higher than the spec allowed or fe uh, feasible wise, at least um, device you want to implement, why not you just go with the PCIe, right? And uh, and we actually ask each other the question, yeah, why not? And uh, so, so, so kind of we start to putting down some, some points that, uh, that uh, we think, yeah, it looks like even we want people to point them to the PCIe, there are 
uh, some limitation with with you know doing the the NIC in the PCIe uh, form factor as well. So just quick outline here. So we are, as a quick fact check to 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 um, to make sure we are really solving a problem instead of we are trying to come out solution and seeking for a problem. So. Uh, uh, some limitation we realize if we push uh, the NIC to the PCIe, uh, and, and uh, the first one is NCSI. Kind of I mentioned a little bit earlier is it's not native to have NCSI, and you probably need to define something around the reserve pin to have that. Uh, and uh, the second one is the multi-host use case. Um, so this one is really not PCIe provisioned, and uh, and uh, you if you have like four uh, hosts, you need four clocks, but. Uh, where do we put those four clocks in the PCIe uh, golden finger? Or maybe you can come out solution with a with an internal cable um, for for NCSI and the um, PCIe clock, but that's kind of also a patch solution and uh, um, brings serviceability uh, challenge. Um, and the the third one is a power domain and the. Uh, and the NIC that um, can be, because NIC is something can be uh, heavily involved with management, and uh, which means the NIC uh, is better to have power if the management is running on NIC and you need to control the system power on, power off, et cetera, with the, with the NIC. So, so however, PCIe has like uh, um, standby, standby power wise, it has like one watts of power defined, and many of NIC cannot uh, live with that in, in that in that envelope. I, I would say all NICs. <coughs> and uh, compact size, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot, the last bullet point, but I, I feel like it's somewhat uh, more kind of uh, the most important one, actually. So, so, so a lot of uh, kind of challenge with the server design now is uh, provide flexibility. So in typically, because the mezzanine car is, is compact and it's kind of can get into the baseball uh, on the vertical space-wise. So we are talking about uh, getting another um, probably five millimeter-ish extra uh, Z height uh, when you implement mezzanine car. And how I get there is a typical standoff is a standoff of the motherboard, like how much uh, distance you have from bottom of motherboard to the sheet metal is three millimeter. And the motherboard thickness is uh, two millimeter-ish. So, so that gave you about five extra millimeter to accommodate the connectors uh, of the NIC or the heatsink of the NIC that you can actually go underneath the motherboard if, uh, if you did on that way. And put it into, into a more like a, a typical use case is uh, for a typical one use server, um, you are able to put a mezzanine car um, with reasonable height together with a standard PCIe car. And uh, for many of the server that I'm just a deal breaker, like if they only have one PCIe slot, then the, uh, you pretty much ha need to have a network on the server, and then you, you have zero flexibility for the rest of the, the configuration, and, and that's a big, uh, uh, big, big challenge for server vendor, and, and they think the mezzanine car is, is, is a good uh, answer for that, that challenge. And that that kind of this challenge is is harder to be to to the rest of the the, the challenge with PCIe that you cannot get around with a with a jumper cable. So so the conclusion we get yeah we still we are addressing the a valid question. So we we, we think what we uh, the problem we address here is is very applicable to help with the the server design. Okay. General approach, I talk a lot about it, so uh, just uh, quickly refresh for whoever just walked in, is we want to take an open pro approach. We want to talk to the community and have a kind of a round table discussion. And uh, in terms of how we identify those challenge, what kind of, how to define the problem we're trying to solve and uh, uh, what are the options we, we can uh, have and what are the pros and cons of the options Let's, let's list out the factors and uh, agree on the factors before we kind of go into deep uh, having a set agenda of um, picking one solution. Um, we, we should uh, 
I, I think that's kind of the approach that we more likely to, to make a convergence and, uh, and make uh, this uh, ecosystem healthier in long term. And uh, uh, here are kind of some very high level thoughts on the, on the, the things that we should think about. And uh, I kind of break it into, into three buckets. The first is impact to the NIC itself. Like this is more like the NIC vendors uh, take, like what are the, your use case? What are your boundary of the use case? Uh, what are the more typical use case? Well, what are the kind of uh, stretch goal that not, may or may not have a maybe 50-50 um, but uh, I'm saying my power of my device may go that high, but not really sure. Uh, while some of the use cases are more realistic and more uh, kind of, I already have a silicon plant. I have conv high confidence is hitting, let's say, 20 watts, uh, and very critical to me. So we want to get those messages from the, the NIC uh, suppliers, and uh, I wish to have it uh, uh, not only uh, to to, to me, uh, to Facebook, uh, but also uh, through uh, open communication. If this is something you can share the scope of your problem, send an email to the mailing list, you know, broadcast your message, speak for yourself. Um, but uh, if there is something really kind of touch the line of your um, companies uh, or IP or like uh, confidential wise, uh, then the fallback position is reach out to me and I can be the master of your, or integrate those uh, feedbacks. But I, I think the default should be the open communication. Uh, the second one is uh, to the system guys. So the system guys, definitely uh, if we make any change um, to the form factor, uh, it will have some impact to the system. And uh, the impact can be big. And, uh, and uh, so I do uh, hope uh, everyone that you, if, if no matter your system vendor or NIC vendor, if you talk to, someone that doing work uh, in this form factor, but they are not aware we are here talking about this topic, and they are not aware there is a forum for exchange of opinion of them. This please uh, do encourage them to, to reach out and to sign up to the menus and reach out to me and, uh, and uh, uh, join this uh, open community and just ask each other, hey, do you know the mailing list? You know, uh, do, are you getting email from there? and make sure your partner is aware of. And like, for example, yesterday I walked to some booth uh, in, the, in the exhibition hall, and they have like, like eight different mezzanine car for their servers, but uh, they are not aware like uh, who or like uh, what's going on uh, here. They, they don't know, they, they, they didn't sign up on the server mailing list, so they didn't get noticed of the mezzanine car subgroup is forming and the mailing list is set up. So they are just doing it from a snapshot of a spec, but uh, they're going very far, like as far as they did eight different mezzanine car, but they are not uh, kind of being aware uh, what's going on. That, that's a little scary to me. So uh, I strongly encourage each other to, to, uh, to check that fact. And uh, last one is kind of the, the ecosystem uh, bracket is we, we want to make the change in a way that we have a feasibility to moving forward instead of uh, bifurcation, like becomes there are two camp, MES 2.0 camp, MES 3.0 camp, and uh, diverge from there. And we, we want to kind of, I hope to have more open communication. And uh, you know, if you have some signal, send a signal out. Uh, if, if the signal helps to boost confidence with the new ecosystem, um, that's helpful for people to kind of see the trend of each other and, and uh, kind of jump to the, uh, the transition. So uh, I, think, I think kind of on top of the line, uh, we, are, we cover most of the non-detailed technical part of the discussion about the approach, the problem we want to address uh, the general approach and uh, uh, then I'm going to get into kind of what has been went through in the community and uh, what are the options we see that possible to address this. Uh, some of the options kind of uh, most people if not all agree that yeah that's that's not that interesting let's just put it 
put aside it. And some of them, yeah, we see the pros and cons of this, and uh, let's uh, let's spend more time uh, looking into it. And and some of the option maybe, yeah, it looks like a great if it is you study it from day one, but. Uh, it means a total transition of the ecosystem, and uh, of course, we have a bunch of concern from everyone. Um, how how to make that happen? Even that's that looks good, but uh, how how do I dance around this? So, um, and uh, and I want to emphasize uh, the list of the options here is not really uh, limited here. Uh, so, if you have some, you know you. After you um, kind of get a sense of the problem and uh, uh, have some thoughts and went through some existing option has been gone through, uh, either you see some point that it was uh, missed in the existing like, discussion already happened, or you think there is a, a, a ninth or tenth option that can address a problem with certain pros and cons, but worth bringing up. Please do speak out, uh, and uh, and not 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 necessarily here, but uh, you know, uh, in the in the mailing list, in the work group call, um, uh, talk about it, and and reach out to me in person to have very detailed kind of spend an hour sit together to go through it, um, and I'm willing to look at all the possibilities before and and trying to get those possibility in front of the um, the all, all the stakeholders here. <laughs> and uh, on top level, uh, I want to say we have like, uh, I think uh, uh, before I really get into maybe on top level, we are looking at changing the mechanical and the thermal constraint in different angles. Maybe some options are like extending the length of car, width of car, height of car, or combination of them. Uh, some of the changes are moving the collector around to address the PCIe kind of uh, breaking out uh, problem we had, we inherited uh, from, uh, from day one. And uh, uh, we, we kind of, for now, we see two buckets of the solution. Kind of solution number three, I can go into a little, a little bit detail in the next slide, is, 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 is trying to push for a solution that uh, has some backward compatibility. That basically, it's possible that you make a baseball that uh, uh, work with the uh, extended form factor uh, on the length, and uh, uh, and but it's, you still can plug in the mass 2.0. Like the mass 2.0 should still plug in and drop in compatible, and that's kind of one 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 option. And six seven eight is is very similar, but with a little bit tweaking around it, and I'm, I'm going to majorly, mainly talk about seven. So seven is more from a, a clean sheet point of view, um, that, uh, that it makes it, um, it, from a point, uh, if we design meddling for factor today from day one, everyone get together, it's probably the one we want to go. And it's kind of mimicking PCIe uh, placement, and the, the difference is change the where the supposed to be the golden finger become a mezzanine connector. Um, but uh, six, seven, eight uh, has a little bit difference on the backward compatibility, or like at least theoretically, is there any backward compatibility? Um, and, but roughly the idea is to, to make the correction or make the improvement to, to make it uh, uh, very similar to PCIe and easy to make that uh, modification if you already have a PCIe car that you were designed for. And then we can go to a little bit in the detail. So quick, quickly just look at the picture. Uh, is is uh, option three is basically uh, extension the existing form factor. The existing form factor is the one in the green, uh, green uh, PCB. And then it may make it more uh, 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 longer to a point. And the, the, the kind of the total distance and the, 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 the length is, is I, t I put it in 6.6 .6 to be the same as a half length PCIe car, but it's really up to discussion. So nothing really big here again. Uh, and uh, we kind of see the pros and cons with it. And the major, uh, the major cons is, is uh, it doesn't solve the problem with the PCIe routing uh, here. So the PCIe will still need to go to the P Connector A and connector B, and uh, whatever the space you have here, if you put a, another ASIC here, they need to talk to the NIC, 
or if you put a bunch of DRAM here that uh, need to uh, have the memory controller somewhere here, then uh, your PCI routing is just on the way, and then it, it becomes like how do you, uh, basically you're talking about adding layer for the PCB, uh, and potentially adding uh, some of the PCB cost, and also uh, thickness-wise, it may go out of the profile that we have today. Um, and we kind of get uh, some feedbacks from the, the NIC vendors, and oh, how do we do on time? Just time check. We got 15 minutes. Leave some time for questions. Sure. I I think I will just do this slide and the option seven quickly, and uh, then point out you to some um, how to involve part, and then we can take the question. I hope at least uh, we have that 10 minutes for the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So actually, then. Um, so in general, the feedback is, uh, is, is something better, but we still have to see a lot of challenge uh, from, 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 from uh, NIC vendors and the potential cloud service provider adopters. And uh, so six, seven, eight are very similar in a little bit tweaked, so I'm just going to uh, talk about seven for now, but the slide will be available. Yeah, the, the slide for all the sessions should be posted on the web by Monday. Okay. Yeah, and also I will post it in the um, subgroup, so you can always get a link for, for the material. And basically, it is trying to say, okay, I have connected A here, I had a connected B here. I'm going to move everything to the left side of the car, and then, uh, which makes it very similar in the placement of PCIe uh, standard golden finger location and the, the, the ball out. And then uh, it may have a few optional uh, depths and a width uh, that the, the, the dimension itself is, uh, is also up to discussion. Uh, what, a, what a implication is this is kind of put away the backward compatibility uh, uh, with the exception of I'm still having a connected A and B here, uh, presumably it's a, a Bergstead Plus. Uh, but while the backward compatibility is uh, taken away, uh, we can t talk about challenge is like how, how do we move the ecosystem, like how do we move those uh, 15, 20 adopters and maybe hundreds of products is adopting this form factor to a non-compatible form factor, right? This is kind of you are moving a mountain. So, so I think for this one, I think we should uh, sit down and look at those pros and cons uh, and uh, being aware what kind of trade-off we are made here. Uh, and then, then if we can see the, uh, a, a very strong value on this one, it's probably easier to make that movement of the mountain. Um, and uh, uh, so, so to me, and I want to make it clear, is I don't really have a preset uh, preference uh, on, on those options. So I want to also be um, objective on, on the discussion and being kind of play the moderator rule, make sure everyone understands everything um, uh, instead of pushing uh, uh, my agenda into into the community. So, so but re meanwhile, we do want to point out the, the good side of this approach is kind of it's it's very similar to PCIe. If you are going to make a NIC in PCIe inform factor, it's probably a lower effort to make it happen. The first one and the second one is. Uh, uh, is the like the improvement point of view? If we do not have the backward compatibility, we may do more improvement. For example, we may bump up the speed of the uh, the connector to higher speed uh, than Berg, Berg Stack Plus has, and essentially leave some headroom for future uh, upgrades. Uh, or we may improve the mechanical mounting pe uh, mechanism uh, to a different way. So because we don't have that backward legacy, um, it goes on and so forth. And so it's kind of open the door, say, more like starting clean sheet. Let's try to define something good for the next at least five years, I would say. So those are the two major options. And the last I want to, before taking q and I want to uh, highlight how to involve parts. So uh, with the support of the OCP Foundation and the work group from CMAC and John, uh, a, a subgroup on this topic uh, uh, is built. 
So uh, we kind of similar to other work group. We have a wiki, we have a mailing list, and uh, we have uh, a subgroup call that happen. Uh, uh, default is every uh, first Wednesday of the month uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific uh, time, and the schedule will be showing in the in the calendar of the OCP events. Uh, and uh, essentially, we may after we get some discussion uh, down and uh, close to convergence uh, and start to need to work, uh, work out details, we may have a face-to-face -face workshop hosted somewhere. Um, uh, I will watch for uh, either uh, an OCP workshop may be organized uh, in, 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 some, in, in the US probably, uh, or Facebook can also um, be the host for the event. And, and, and but we don't have really day set. And uh, one feedback I get from, uh, from, um, from Intel is, um, uh, is um, uh, why this one is sitting in the server work group and uh, uh, instead of we have an uh, OCP networking work group. Uh, and uh, I think at least uh, the action I will take is to also broadcast the message there and make sure whoever on the networking work group is aware there is some discussion. I think this in general, this is a, a topic that's going across around uh, networking. Uh, and uh, the last is uh, currently it is called kind of mezzanine NIC, uh, but we also see potential use case of a non-NIC, uh, but I follow this form factor. Actually, we already see it. Some people make a HPA, you know, or some people can make a flash uh, carrier with it. So those possibilities are, are open there, and uh, I think it can still uh, being part of the scope of the subgroup, so um, just to point out. And we have around 10 minutes left, and I would like to take any question from the audience. Um, if there is any. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, please. Right, my question would be about um, the right um, timing and time to market. When should these designs de be defined? I guess there is the dependency on Intel's um, PCI Gen 4 um, so, yeah, good question. definition. Good question. I think. Uh, I think, uh, um, take one step back, uh, if, if I, sorry, maybe kind of mention the Gen 4 part of the thing is because the, I don't really think the Gen 4 itself is, uh, uh, is, is very correlated to this discussion because this is not to enable Gen 4. We already have a plan for Gen 4 in the MES 2.0. So if people want to build a Gen 4 meddling car and Gen 4 system, there is already example. Uh, is doing it. But uh, the timing, I think, is a great question. And it's also uh, one of the questions being uh, touched on the first work group call uh, earlier this month, uh, is uh, uh, actually like last week. <coughs> yeah. So the, um, the, the timing, I think, uh, I don't have, I didn't, you, you may notice I didn't put a time there. But I think uh, uh, the AI I take from the call is I may gather information and please feel free to. Um, broadcast to your mailing list. I think a few factors. One on the next side, is there something you want to enable in your roadmap that you want to enable in your car, but uh, it's not achievable, and uh, but we want to uh, uh, enable together in time to market on my every next vendor's um, plan may be different. That's one factor, right? And the other is uh, when we enable that um, that uh, uh, first, let's say first, MES 3.0 NIC, is there any system can work with it? And w mm -hmm. what are the leading system uh, solution provider will be on the... Yeah. On the uh, One clarification for that, the current V2 MES is not Gen 4 compliant. Um, yeah, I did work with the vendors and there's a, a form fit and function <coughs> connector that is Gen 4, so we'll probably release a, either a, an ECN or a 2.1 in there yeah. that just allows the Gen 4 capable connectors to enable that before this. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm a system vendor and redesign the AC system motherboard usually takes time. It yeah. goes along with Intel's uh, top pick. Yeah, so, uh, so, so and, and uh, in, kind of in, in, in yesterday's announcement, you can see you know, Intel is not the only thing here, and there are different solutions. 
AMD ARM, different ARM vendor, and, and, and it, it, you, you do have a freedom to plan that. So I, I wouldn't call out, I, I would say we, we do not want to say, okay, this is definitely to lock step with a certain Intel refresh, but if majority of the system vendor is kind of taking this into planning and the leading form factor is kind of uh, correlate to the x86 Intel yeah. um, planning, then yeah, it's a factor we should consider. Yeah. It definitely needs to be finished in time to allow those platforms. Yeah. Any other questions? Surely someone else Any has other a question? question. Yeah, so. Jai, do you think we need to meet more often than every month to get this process going? Uh, what do you, everybody think? <laughs> I'm open to it. I'm open to it. But uh, uh, yeah, um, if if we have, I mean, we can try to make it uh, twice a month, maybe, or like um, every two week. And we may need to work around schedule with a server work group call to to avoid the uh, collision. But uh, yeah, uh, if if uh, I think we have a good um, momentum, see two thumbs up. Who want to make it more than more often than one month? Raise your hand. Okay, so I, I, may I take a picture so I make sure everyone show up? Okay, <laughs> well, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let me work on that. I, uh, and it's, yeah, I, I, I think we can at least try it and we can dial back if we feel it, it's, it's too often. But uh, uh, I, it's good to see that people are asking that. That means we have momentum here. And, and uh, yeah. now I do want to plug the, uh, the mailing list that's up there. Um, same thing as the server mailings. This is a subgroup, so it'll just be focused on the, the next gen MES. I encur strongly encourage everyone to go out there, join the mailing list, and when you get your confirmation back, send a little welcome email. You know, let everybody else see that there's who all is interested, and in, you know, in your welcome email, talk about what you think the, the challenges are and where you'd like to see it go. I um, think the more traffic we can get on there, and the more people speaking up and what they're what they want out of it, the better specification we'll end up with in the end. Yeah, thank you for the notes. All right, so no more Still questions. Few more minutes. Can... Go ahead, Albert. Just wondering, is there any interest in trying to, is there any interest from the work group in wanting a 25 gig capable mix or a 25 gig capable <laughs> MES card? Um, so before I answer, anyone want too, to volunteer? So. Because that's kind of question to the audience or the general public. So the question is, is there any interest to bump to 25 gig for the meddling form factor? Well, which currently we kind of, yeah, we have a PCI Gen 4, we have 10 gig KR. Uh, what's the interest level on 25 gig? Yeah, so the, the spec is listing examples out there, but not all of them. If you go out there on the floor, there's already 25 gig cards out there. So they're already out there. I don't think there's a need to, to update the spec to explicitly call them out because so there's a Paul, kind of form Paul form. raising his hand. Oh, okay. So, so you 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 currently just walk around the, like with a Berg stack, and uh, how do you get? Well, it's still Gen three. It's just. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just SFP twenty eight and QSFP twenty eight. I, I not think. Gen 4. Let me clarify question, but uh, I think you are asking the twenty five gig KR kind of thing, <laughs> not twenty five gig Ethernet that using. Yeah, but. Because because this gentleman is from the connector vendor, so he is asking very specific. <laughs> yeah. KR, yeah, yeah, yeah. But feel free to confirm on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I think the question is about the 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 mezzanine connector itself. Is there is there demand or is there interest in to bump to twenty five? So. Yeah. Okay. So we we have one. Yeah, one case. Okay. Second hand. Okay. Right, right. Five minutes card kind. In general, right now, this is a good copy. I don't know what it is. You're not talking about the five minutes card. You don't mention the five minutes card in this case here. Yeah, sorry about that. This is, yeah, I think, uh, I, think uh, I, should, I should at least point it out. Yeah, the five minutes uh, use cases. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if PCI gen for uh, Outlook, yeah. 
Okay. okay. So I'd like to thank everyone and, for uh, coming. Uh, up next, we'll have. Uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Go ahead. Thank you, yeah. you know where to get me. Yeah. So um, feel free to catch me.